In this video, we're going to focus on the spanning tree protocol. We'll look at the overview. We'll configure PodFast, BPDU guard, and also root guard, which are security features against STP attacks. Now, I assume many of you are already familiar with STP configuration and STP features. Right now, let's just look at our spanning tree because we have spanning tree running by default. I'm just going to look at it for everything. So we have VLAN 1. Actually, let's just look at a summary. Spanning tree summary. Cool. So we have this switch is in PVST mode. And then it's the root bridge for VLAN 999. All these other features, we're going to configure some of them in this video. And then you can see uh, VLANs that we have. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 99, things like that. Let's take a closer look actually. Let's look at show spanning tree for a particular VLAN, say VLAN 10. All right, so it gives you the address of the root for this spanning tree instance, and it tells you that this is zone ID. So we can actually take a closer look at the root. So if we look at all the options, so we have for VLAN 10, we have for VLAN 20, we have for VLAN 99. For VLAN 99, this switch is actually the root. Let's check our show interface VLAN 99. Actually, I'll just do a show spanning tree for VLAN 99. And then you can see that this bridge is the root for this particular VLAN. For VLAN 99, this bridge is the root. And then you have the address. Now, you remember how STP works. For each VLAN, the switch with the highest switch priority, that's this. Highest switch priority actually means lower. So anything lower than this, if there's a switch that has a priority that is lower than this, that switch will be the preferred route. But if all the switches have the same priority, then it starts looking at the MAC address. So let's come to switch 3, for example, and look at show spanning tree for VLAN 99. Oh, that's true. Remember that VLAN 99 is what we configured for unused and we haven't been using it. So this is not a good example. Let's actually look at 20 that both of them have. So for 20, this has 20, that has 22. Cool. You notice that for VLAN 20, SW3, that's the switch 3, is the root. Now look at his address. Let's come to switch 1. And you, so this is talking about the root. So that's 0006 F6 E3 36000, which is this, right? Now, why did switch 3 become the root for this spanning tree instance? If you look at the addresses, so this is 0006. And if you look at the address of switch 1, this is 001C. So 006, that's, zero, that's this, is actually lower than this. So what happens is when the priority is the same on all the switches, then the MAC address will be used. So the switch with the lowest MAC address becomes the root switch. Of course, you can always change what your root switch should be. So for example, if I go to switch one and I go to spanning tree, look at the options that we have. I can specify a particular VLAN, so VLAN 20, and then I can specify what the root should be. So configure switch as root, that's primary and secondary. If I say primary and just press enter. So let's see what has happened now. Look at this. And you can see that this bridge is now root because the priority has reduced. So right now you notice that this is no more, this is no more the root bridge. Those are things you should already be familiar with. While we're here, we can also look at the different switch roles, designated root ports, designated right now is forwarding, is in the forwarding state. Let's see if we can find anyone that is maybe something different. Oh, so this is all designated and forwarding to, let's go to switch one. This is all designated and forwarding to, okay, cool. And you should also be familiar with, like if we want to increase the speed of spanning tree, because sometimes those ports can take very long to come up if you remember when we we're waiting for r1 to be able to ping sometimes we had to wait for a long time before the ping packets went there are several things that we could do to speed up spanning tree one of it is this spanning tree 
now look you can right now it's running in pvst that's per vlan spanning tree mode but you can actually increase it that's the rapid spanning tree mode now all this has to see any routing and switching knowledge so you should already be familiar with things like this but we can speed up our spanning tree so we configured it for the entire switch right now and then you notice that our vlans went down and then they came back up cool so that's just one way to speed up spanning tree Another way is port fast. Port fast is good to be enabled on your interfaces when you know that you're not going to have any switch connected to that interface. So if you have host, so like your laptops or computers or your servers, on switch one, our test PC, sorry, FA105, or we could use four, which is the server, is connected to our server. So we know that we should never receive BPD on that and we can enable port fast. So this would increase the speed of the spanning tree convergence. And you notice here we can use the spanning tree. So you can enable it globally or you can enable it per interface. So we can use the spanning tree port fast. And then, so if you want to disable it for a particular interface or you want to enable port fast even in trunk mode, right now we we'll just click on enter. So notice the warning that it says. So it says that post fast should only be enabled on ports connected to a single host. Connecting hubs, concentrators, switches, bridges, etc. when post fast is enabled can cause temporary bridging loops. So now it tells me that port fast has been configured on these ports, but only when the interface is in non-trunking mode, which it is right now it's an access port. Let's go to our server and see that we still have connection. So if I ping .100, 100 is actually itself, so 101 would be better. Cool, so you can ping 101. Now I'm going to run a continuous ping. Right, I'll just let it keep running. And then I'll come back here. I'll shut this port down. Now, now that I've shut it down, you can see that the ping is failing. And then I'll no shut. So let's see how long it takes before this comes back. As you can see, we missed only three packets and that's when I was going back and forth. That's because of port fast. I'm going to remove port fast and we'll try this again. Control C. So I'm just going to remove port fast. Spanning tree port fast disable. Or I could use no spanning tree port fast. No spanning tree port fast port fast so i can just specify no spanning tree port fast so let's come back here and run our ping again for 101 is going right now i'm just going to shut this down shut notice that is it has started failing so i'm going to go back and no shot so let's come back here and see how many packets we miss So as you notice, it's still timing out. Right now, we've missed up to six packets. That's the seventh one. That's because STP is still running on that port because it has to be careful. It doesn't know if it's a switch that is connected to that port or if it's a host. And you can see when it comes back. So with port fast, what we're telling the switch is that we know what is connected to that port and that port will never send BPDU packets. So you are safe. A loop will never occur. So I'm just going to enable it back on this interface, spanning tree port fast. All right. In this section, let's look at some features, security features that we can configure for STP. I'm going to come to switch three. Let's also say that I enable port fast on my, that's the interface that is connected to my router. One, zero, one. So I'm going to use switch, not switch port spanning tree and i'm going to enable port fast right so it tells me it has been enabled i'm going to see if i still have connection here ping 192.168.10.100 yeah so that's fine so i still have dot 100 and everything is still fine right now now one thing that we can configure is i'm going to show you the options we can configure the bpdu guard 
Now, what BPDU guard tells you is that you actually configure this most of the time when you have port fast. So it tells you that if you have a port fast link, so for example, we only configure port fast on things that are connected to end devices like host, like servers. So they should never send BPDU. So if you ever get a BPDU on that interface, then you know there's a high likelihood that an attack is going on. So maybe an attacker has connected a rogue switch and then is sending BPDUs. So if we enable BPDU on this, that's the BPDU guard. And you notice we have enable no other options. I can also show you that we could enable this globally and then default. So this will enable it on all the ports. But right now I just want to be specific. Cool. So I'm just going to try to simulate a BPDU like an attack. Config T. All I have to do here is to create a protocol. I'll say something like this and come to FA00. This is just so that this router will generate BPDUs. And then just change the bridge group to say one. Cool. Now when we come to SW3, notice what happens. It says that he received a BPD on that port, and so he put the port in the error disabled state. So if we look at that port right now, show interface gigabit 101, you can see that the port is in the error disabled state. Cool. The same way we recovered from port security, we can also recover from this. So recovery, and then of course we specify the course. And look at the options that we have. So we also have BPDU guard. So you can automatically recover from BPDU guard. BPDU guard. Cool. Let me just remove this here. No. And then I'm also going to remove this. Cool. So I'm just, we can wait for it to recover since we've already done this recover. Or we can just go to the interface short and no short. So I waited for it to recover, and as you can see, the line protocol is now up. So if I ping, this guy should be back up right now. Cool. So that's fine. Now one more thing that we want to configure here is the root guard feature. So if we do our show spanning tree, spanning tree for VLAN 20, Right now, VLAN 20, I think the root should be SW1. So show span entry VLAN 20. Cool. Now, with the root guard feature, we can restrict who becomes a root because we don't just want an attacker to connect and broadcast a lower priority because anybody who broadcasts a lower priority would basically become root. So we can configure root guard on those ports that we know shouldn't become root. So for example, I could just say config T. Let's assume that I want to block SW3 should never become root, for example. So SW3 is connected to our 020. I can use this spanning tree guard. And then you can see this root command. So you just guard mode to root guard. So root. And that's all. Cool. Actually, FA1020 is the one that connects us to switch 2. I should actually have done it on switch 3. Let me just change that. So just know this. It shouldn't be here. Go to FA1021. 21 is the one that connects me to switch 3. So that's where I want to enable this. Cool. So I've enabled it on that right now. It seems switch 3 was the root for VLAN 10. And that's why we see this error message here. So basically, you've seen how root guard works. I'm just going to remove that. No. So in summary, root guard protects the placement of your root switch or your root bridge. This brings us to the end of this video where we have mainly seen how to protect against STP attacks using features like the BPDU guard and the root guard. I hope you have found this video informative and I'd like to thank you for watching.